Has the United States of America ever, ever had such an overwhelming number of key high-level officials that were complete idiots or mentally incompetent? Has, has that ever happened before? I'm not aware that it has. But the president has to be told where to stand by the Easter Bunny. The vice president probably believes in the Easter Bunny. The Speaker of the House has seen the Easter Bunny on many occasions uh, between her uh, glasses of fine wine, and we go all the way down the list. Has there ever been a time in American history where the people who are making decisions on behalf of us for the country were so mentally impaired? I don't think so. Now, let's take a look at something to contrast this with. Let's talk about a kind of a person, an occupation, that virtually every American encounters at least once every few years. Many of us encounter them a couple times a day. Let's talk about what it takes to be an airline pilot. When you listen to the requirements necessary for every single one of the tens of thousands of men and women who fly airplanes for a living, you realize that I want you probably want to. I want that kind of rigor in the guy that's flying the airplane. I want him to have a medical every six months. I want him to have a minimum number of flight hours. I want him in the simulator being trained out to handle twin engine failures while you have a radio failure and a, and a fire in the back of the cockpit. I want the pilot and the co-pilot to agree on everything on a nice sunny day and when you're flying through ice and snow to a landing when you can't even see the runway. I like this idea and I am comfortable flying on an airplane that has those kind of requirements for the pilots. But now, if you think about it, the entire country, all 330 something million of us, are being steered by two people up in the front of the room there and neither one of them can think on their feet because neither one of them can think. They're both idiots, and the people below them are idiots, and the people trying to explain their behavior are idiots. They are mentally incompetent. And I think the idea that this is going on, that we can have this kind of rigor for people flying an airplane, but not this kind of rigor for people flying the country, is just plain insane. It's insane. Shouldn't apply just to Democrats, obviously. It should apply to everybody. The President of the United States should have to take an annual cognition test. And those results need to be public. And, and that's all there is to it. Because anything less than this is just plain stupid. And stupid people can't think on their feet. They can't think at all. Number one, we're responsible for our own protection. We can't, this, this fantasy that the, that the rest of the world is a perfectly safe place where nothing ever goes wrong has got to come to an end. So was I... Was I Horrified when I heard the news? Yes. Was I surprised when I heard the news? No. Will I be horrified when the next shooting occurs? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Because talking about these things in a manner of addressing them doesn't take away the revulsion, the disgust, the horror, the sympathy, the, 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 sheer, the sheer unknowingness of it, the disbelief that somebody could actually do those things. But they've happened before, they'll happen again. And the reason they will happen again is because we are basically, fundamentally, historically, a species that does in fact behave itself extraordinarily well under virtually all circumstances. But you put 330 million people, you put 8 billion people together for that matter, whatever. To expect that these things will never happen is to, is to not only deny who and what we are, but it's also to, to deny any chance of reducing it because we will never be able to stop this. You see, the, the, the left thinks that the problem is the guns. We go after the guns. It's not the guns. It's not a gun problem. It's an evil problem. And instead of going after the gun lobby, I'm surprised that the president didn't say, you know, we need to do something about the evil lobby. We need to do something about the people that are doing the killing rather than the things they're using to do the killing with. The weapons in this case are as clear as can be. The weapons are morally neutral. The murderer had an AR type 15 weapon. The people who stopped the murderer had an AR type 15 weapon. The weapon is not the problem. As this goes on, and the nation's spotlight is focused appropriately enough on this horrific act, in cities all across America, all of them run by Democrats, this number of murders happens every total three days, maybe. It is abundantly clear to me by now 
given the number of times we've seen this, that the left and, in fact, probably politicians in general have no interest in really s- s- alleviating this problem, have no real interest in trying to prevent them. Because if they did, we know what to do. We simply refuse to show the name, face of the people that did the murdering. We don't do a body count so that some other guy can figure I can beat that number. We, we do all of the things to deglamorize it that the psychologists who study mass shootings basically say is the primary motivation for people to do them in the first place. We could do that. We could, we could have an algorithm that looked for uh, not, not, just the dis- not just a violent description of acts, but bragging about them, you know, that kind of thing. I'm going to do this. We could have an algorithm that do that. But no, we don't. We have an algorithm that silences the truth when it disagrees with the, with the people who write the algorithms. We could start treating our children as if they're as valuable as the money we keep in a bank or any other place that we arm uh, or guard closely, although my understanding is that there might have been a guard at the school who did absolutely nothing, and a guard who does nothing is worse than no guard at all, at all and we know that. And finally, we could start asking ourselves some pretty serious questions about what it is to be a sheepdog and why this is not the kind of job for everybody. Because ultimately, when you really get down to it, this is the, the, the giant lesson that, that Uvalde shows us, is that people who wear the uniform, who have the weapons, will stand around with their arms crossed, waiting for their tactical shooters, their body armor, their specialist teams – 